Hello everyone, and welcome to our second episode of uh, Fire Carry Guide, where we are talking about the recently changed American carriers, and uh, some of the kind of uh, damage control party changes, and more of an updated captain how-to guide setup for using our ship. So, episode 2 as we said is the Bogue, here we are, tier 5. Now, uh, we'll go through, if you've already not seen the Langley video, maybe go back and watch that, but ultimately we're going to talk about captain skills, ship modules, setup, that type of stuff, uh, what to put on the exterior, uh, how necessarily to play the ship, and then we'll show a random battle at the end. So, first things first, under modules, when you first get the uh, bulk, you're going to be down at the, <laughs> the tier 4 fighters, but you'll also have tier 6 uh, torpedo bombers, which is actually pretty strong in terms of like, their health pool they have and the speed that they go at. And you'll also have tier 5 dive bombers. You can't upgrade those. The bulk also had a change so that it became 1-1-1. One, one, one. It doesn't have the fighter setup. It doesn't have the old strike setup. You're basically locked into a balanced uh, plane setup where you have one fighter, one torpedo bomber, one dive bomber. Now, what do you do when you first get this ship? Well, the uh, hull does actually give you four extra units, so you're going up to 30 planes. It's quite cramped in this plane. You, you don't have a lot of uh, spare plane capacity, so you could go after the um, hull. I think personally I would work for air control because this carrier can go into double carrier games and it's a tier 5, and you can go against uh, tier 6 carriers in double carrier games, and uh, they have the ability to all attack and strafe, we don't. And the best self-defense, because not everyone's going to have tight point captains, you not might necessarily have the best AA on this ship, we want to upgrade our fighters first. So we get our fighters first, then we can maybe do the hull, but it depends how much free experience you have. If you can afford the fighters, go for that, then get the hull, that's great. If you can, if you can free experience both of these modules, you're doing really, really well to begin with. Now, in terms of consumables, you may choose to take damage control party 2. You don't necessarily need to take it anymore because of the 30-second um, timer. Uh, it's active for 30 seconds, which you have enough time to land and take off some plane waves if you're on fire. So that's an optional thing. If you're trying to save money, you don't need to go with that. Under upgrades, we have an extra upgrade over the Langley. We still go with the Air Groups Mod 1 for the extra 10% effectiveness of our guns. That's our fighters are basically tank here. And in theory, extra rear gunner and our torpedo bomber dive bombers is also quite useful. Uh, and the second point will go with the reduction to fire and flooding. That's more beneficial than propulsion or steering because we're not really supposed to be shot at by anything else if we're playing right. And then lastly, our third and new option, we're going to get Air Group Mod 2. Now there's two options here for uh, planes. One is uh, servicing time, so planes are ready quicker. Or two, fighter health and fighter ammunition. Well, fighter health is kink, because in fighter health, you win click on engagements, and we don't have the ability to alt attack yet, because that's tier 6. So we want that more health, we want to survive more, we want to use our big fighter to bully the Japanese or other American carriers. Because the other American carriers got that 20% health bonus, he'll win the air battle. And because you've got so few planes at tier 4 and 5, you need to be extremely cautious uh, how you use your planes. You just can't afford to lose them. So, uh, plane health for me is far more important than getting uh, things up and out there quickly. And also with extra plane health, you can live inside enemy AA longer and you can scout longer or fight inside AA longer or go after bombers in enemy AA longer because you're not going to lose planes as quickly. And then the ammunition, although you can't strafe, is very helpful because if you are able to bully with your fighter and you suffer very few losses, that single fighter may actually be able to stay out the whole game, which is very, very powerful. Under exterior, if you're working your way through uh, the uh, bulk and you want to level up, I highly recommend taking an experienced camouflage, maybe use a fancy one just to kind of level through as fast as you can, there's no reason why not to. Under signals, this is kind of optional, you've got fire and you've got flooding potential with your bombers, so I always like to take uh, the flooding chance. Uh, of a signal and I also like to take the flooding and fire chance signal combine them together you've got pretty good uh, ability to guarantee a flooding from one of a couple of torpedo bomber hits and then we can also use the fire from our dive bombers to kind of damage stack or force a damage control party and then use another bombing source to you know get a full flood or a full fire depending on what's going on so that's two signals. The third and fourth one is kind of optional. The bulk does actually have reasonably-ish tier 5 good AA, so you could boost it with the AA signal. Um, alternatively, you can go with captain skills up here. Uh, and you can go with commander or ship, or if you've got fancy signals, you can go with commander and ship experience. That's entirely up to you how you want to use your four spots. Right. In terms of the captain setup on the bulk, well, it's very similar uh, into the Langley in that we have uh, auto attacks, and because we have auto attacks, uh, our two-point skill is going to slightly change. Now, 
First we go with aircraft servicing expert because we get 5% plane health and 10% servicing time. That means the bombers and the fighters are ready and also everything has more health. More health means it's less likely to die to AA and your fighters can win engagements. So it's a super important skill. Now under the two point skills, as we mentioned before in the Langley video, for aircraft carriers that only have a single torpedo bomber wave, it's very difficult to cross drop, at least with my technique from approaching from behind, approaching from the side uh, with, say, Japanese or multi-wave torpedo bombers, right? So since we only have a single wave, we want to drop as close as we possibly can to the side. And with an alt attack, you wouldn't necessarily take a torpedo acceleration because you can drop closer without the torpedo acceleration. So you might go with something like adrenaline rush. Uh, and probably not expert rear gunner. Expert rear gunner is very helpful only if your captain is staying in the tier four or five brackets where there are no strafes. But it's but thing is, if you're tier five, you can get matched with a tier six guy and he can just strafe your planes anyway. So expert rear gunner has no benefit whatsoever. At least with adrenaline rush, if your ship has taken any undue damage, then your planes will load faster. It's kind of our personal preference between those two things, but. In this particular instance on the Borg right now, assuming your captain is not moving up into, and you're going to reuse it for the tier 6, 7, 8s, in this instance I'm going to take torpedo acceleration because the bombs are auto dropping, not manual dropping, so when they auto drop I want them to actually be really quickly to prevent the enemy ship from being able to turn and then, the, you know, going from side on like, like so to turn and then all the torps miss. We don't want that, so that's why I'm taking torpedo acceleration. As the third point skill, I'm going to probably take torpedo alarm and expertise because the main damage of this ship is its tier 6 torpedo bomber So we want to load them faster 20% loading time is great uh, Other options would be uh, the basic fire training the AA guns here are Okay at mid-range not the long-range ones just the close range and then we have uh, air supremacy where we have the extra fighter, very important to have air control. Uh, the dive bomber also somewhat useful I guess for extra fire chance because you got an extra bomb that drops and then the 11th point skill, which is the core uh, skills that you need for a carrier, is dogfighting expert. And we're using this because uh, our planes are tier 5. Our fighters are tier 5. We may come across Japanese tier 6s. The enemy bolts will have tier 6 torpedo bombers. If we're matched into a tier 6 uh, game, there'll be tier 6 fighters. So dogfighting is absolutely mandatory. Plus we get more ammunition, which is nice. Now, if you were to have a higher than 11 point captain on a bog, then there are some options we can go with. Now, it depends. Is the captain going to stay on the bog all the time, or is this captain going to move uh, onto future ships? Now, if he's going to stay on the bog, then our high-range AA guns, the high-caliber ones uh, for manual fire AA, are actually fairly weak at only 18. The real DPS comes at our mid-range guns. So in this particular instance, if we bring up our little captain scale setup, this is the basic 11-point skills, we would probably take advanced fire training. Advanced fire training would push out our mid-range guns so that our AA would be more effective at a greater range. And then if we had a 19-point captain, because the Bogue's C detection is 11.5, we would take Concealment Expert, probably, for a 19-point captain. And this would bring our detection down to a much more comfortable in the 9-10 region. Uh, that's probably the best way to go about it. Uh, you can play your ship slightly further in front line. You're not going to be spotted as much. Now, admittedly, your ship's movement speed is really slow and you can mix and match this to your own preference but the ship's movement speed is quite low so maybe having a higher detection means you can when you know your ship spotted you can escape sooner but ultimately you're so slow you probably just want to stay stealthy and that's where uh, AFT and concealment would be good taking you from an 11 point captain to a 19 point captain and this is true for the rest going down the American carrier line because um, you the, the the for example the the Ranger and the Lexington have very large uh, concealment values so you in that they are seen more easily, so you want to kind of reduce that number. Anyway, that's all being said, let's now go into a random battle. Let's see what we got then, shall we? Oh, a double carrier game, not a surprise. However, we are in reasonable good tiering. We have some tier 6s, um, and, but mostly 5 and 6s, so it's not a brutal game. But then again, we are protected at tier 5. We're not going to be thrown to 7s. Now, Bog and Zuiho. We know we can outmuscle the Zuiho. The enemy Bog, he could be a threat to us, so we need to be careful how we use it. We've got two Bogs, so our fire control, if we work together, will be better. Uh, there's a division with an Omaha Bog, so we need to be a little bit careful there, because maybe he'll fly his fighters next to his Omaha. 
In terms of other ships, defensive fire is on the Graf Spee. Not on any other ship. There's no other defensive fires other than Graf Spee. New Mexico has, has reasonably good AA. Uh, War Spy depends on the captain and how advanced the captain is. The shards are going to be difficult for us to hit. We can probably go after... Because we've got tier 6 torpedo bombers, we can probably go after the battleships. Uh, we probably don't want to go after the characters. We're still auto-dropping. Cruisers, Leanders are very maneuverable, so we'd have to, we don't really want to go near them. We don't really want to go after any of the cruisers. We're really just going after the Haruna, worse by maybe the Arizona because of the low AA values, that type of stuff. For our bombing trust. Because if we look down here, the, 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 sorry, down there, you'll see that the plane numbers, we have two spare fighters from our current fighter wave, and we have three dive bombers and three torpedo bombers. We have less than a spare wave. So the plane capacity on the Borg really, really is uh, tight. Uh, with that in mind, we just cannot be sacrificial. If we lose more than three of our torpedo bombers in this wave, then we will not have a full wave in the second tack. And that's the same for the dive bombers. Now, our single fire is quite tanky, it's quite powerful. Uh, it's got the dogfighting expert. We just need to make sure we don't go into enemy A and we have to fight on our terms. And because it's a double carrier game, we need to be really careful. Uh, in terms of friendly ships that we can use, we can use our Grass Bay. We can use our Leander. Our Queen Elizabeth's got good A, so is the New Mexico. So it's just a case of fighting on our terms with our planes, that's all. And I'm going to move more over to the middle to join the other bog. Okay, so that's the Zui Host torpedo bombers. But. I mean, I could go after them, but I don't really want to go into the lander's bubble just yet. But I don't want the Nicholas to get wrecked, so yeah, we're going to go up and click. So he's got tier 6 torpedo bombers, which I'm now going to engage. I just want to cause a panic effect. Uh, his fires aren't here, so yeah, it's fine. Yeah, sure. Well, he's actually leaving the AA bubble of the lander, which is the perfect thing for me. So we grabbed him. So the Zuyo has the same problem. He only has two waves. So right now he is really suffering that. This is the real issue right here. I'm going to pull away. And as soon as he goes to after fighter, we're going to double team him. Then this, he shouldn't be doing this because he knows it's two on one. So I'm definitely going to engage the fighter first. I know the bombers are going to get a, a kind of a, some sort of drop in. There's other bombers in the north. That's not important. If we win the fire duel, he will only have three fires left over just like us. And that means he can't, he can't compete anymore for the rest of the game. Boom. Now that's done. We can try and maybe go after some other bombers. Uh, yeah, we get to get that bombers. Although the, the, the torpedo bombers are probably the great threat. We'll get what we can. Yep. Cool. So now he only has three dive bombers left over. And if we can punish these torpedo bombers... He'll be out of the game. The, the, the enemy ball will be just uh, neutered, as it were. Yep, so now he only has a single wave. And if we can just kill a few more... Ah, I lost the plane. I think it's... Yeah, we go. Boom, excellent. So, really good work with my uh, fellow carrier player. Uh, that's the Zui Hose. So he doesn't have air supremacy because he only has one... Uh, sorry, he only has f four, not five. But we see the Haruna. Haruna's vulnerable. There's the only fighter. The other one's probably not ready yet, so we can attack the Haruna because we know his AA values are going to be quite low. That'll get us some damage. I'm going to hold the uh, dive bomber back, and then what we're going to do is we're going to drop with the torpedo bombers first, side on, perhaps a little bit kind of at an angle. Unless he starts turning right, then we'll kind of move the thing up the way. Okay, so that's our drop. Now, what we're looking for is... Oh, now we're going to bring our fighter up to deal with that him because I don't want it to uh, we'll reposition him. Now watch this, we're looking for floods. Boom, there's a flood, right? Now the next thing we're looking for as we bring our fire up is these damage numbers. Has he damage controlled? Yes, he has, right? How long's the damage control part in the Japanese? I think it's 15 seconds. So because I know I will win this fighter engagement, I am quite happy to fly over the Haruna and engage. And then we are going to auto drop on top of the Haruna it's quite a large auto drop bubble. Now, if we can get a fire, this will stick. One fire. I mean, it's it's not great. Boom. This is the last of his fire is going to die. One sticky fire. It's just going to increase the damage. If we'd used the torpedo bombers and the dive bombers at the same time, we wouldn't have this extra damage now being accumulated from a sticky fire. So we're just sort of maximizing. If we had two fires, then that would have really hurt him. But it is what it is. Now, I'm going to bring the 
fighters down as quickly as I can and then try and maybe give a Bion some protection. We'll see that these are the last of the bold fighters. He's only got a group of three. He's completely out of fighters though. So I'm going to try and get down and then over to our Bion now without flying into AA bubbles of other ships. Their Zuiho is actually really far out. Nah, he's dead. There's no point going there anymore. Now, I could, in theory, choose to land the fighter and basically take from the reserve and fill it up to seven, but I don't think that's necessary because I know that my uh, five will beat this guy's four. I've got dogfighting expert, and I outnumber him five to four. So I don't need to do that, and plus I can outmuscle uh, any kind of bombers he has. Right, so boom, here's the first set of bombers. Uh, I'm going to try and intercept, go in between him and the New Mexico, which is his intended target. One is the Zuihos, one is the uh, Bulk. So this is the last of the Bulk's uh, planes other than the torpedo bombers he had. Uh, from my torpedo bombers, I'm not entirely sure who I want to attack. Because... No, that's not good. He's basically chosen to fight inside AA. Which means he'll probably lose without loss of any fighters there. My issue is this Graf Spade. Graf Spade could have a defensive fire. He could have, you know, reasonably good air because it's a premium ship, so there could be like a really high uh, captain on board. So I don't want to use the precious planes I've got going after him. What I could do, however, is probably bomb this Arizona. Arizona here could be a good target for us. Yeah, we see the torpedo bombers incoming from New Mexico now, so we're going to move over and engage him. Now I don't click on the plane immediately because it would go at him and then it would kind of follow. I do an intercept course, then I click on. So this will cause a panic effect. We got a plane kill, that's great. There's a panic effect. He might not eat this torp. Yes, he'll eat one. That's all his torpedo has gone. So the bog has now been neutered. We don't have to worry about the bog. Oh, hello, sorry. Regroup those. We only have to worry about the Zui Hose planes now. When we are losing the game. What can we do to help? I guess Arizona. Yeah, let's do that. Don't want to fly next to Leander, so I'll go out from this direction. Okay, here comes Zui host torpedo bombers. Uh, see how the Arizona turned in on it while we were focusing on our own bombing run. Now, if we can get a flooding on this guy. Great, we got a flooding. So now we're going to watch the damage numbers. While wow, we're watching these fires, no, let's see if we can't get this guy. Maybe we have enough ammunition to finish it off. Damage numbers still moving? Yes, they are. So he's still flooding. You might actually flood out and then we'll get a kill now. Cool. Now, I think we're going to have to recall the fire now uh, because we can. Get fresh ammunition, we'll get it full back up to full strength. I don't think there's many planes left over on the enemy team. Our single dive bomber. The Graf Spade is basically loitering with intent. Well, we want to kill him off. Uh, maybe even go after the New Mexico, actually. We need to turn around with our ship as well. And get out of here. Uh, this enemy, our friendly Bog has totally got himself with his pants caught down. I think the Graf will be killed off by our friendly ships. So we're going to basically put some fires on the... Uh, New Mexico. And we are so slow that we might also get caught with these chips here. So <laughs> we'll see. So drop and turn. So this way we're getting the best possible record. I'm anticipating any potential maneuver you might do. And then we just leave it. One bomb. That's why I don't like auto drops. It's also why I don't like dive bombers on the American line, because even with manualing, it's still horrendously inaccurate. So we are spotted by the T-22. We're spotted by a lot of things, to be honest. Yeah, it's a detection range. We're, we're well seen. We're going to get shot at next. In fact, in the, in the element of self-preservation, I think we may have to try and attack uh, nearby ships and, and also because I'm fearful that we may die we're going to set our plane to auto protect the Queen Elizabeth which is the last you know reasonable ship on our side now 
Now, I would like to, to torpedo bomb the, the New Mexico, but in this particular instance, we're kind of desperate. The Leander is a very maneuverable ship, so I'm going to try and attack him from behind, so anticipating that he might turn into the torpedo bomber, so I might clip him with a few. I'm definitely not going to kill him, and if he's smart, he's going to dodge all of this as well. If he turns away, then they're not going to hit. If he turns into them, or if he doesn't move at all, that works best for me. Maybe he's too focused to get his tail ones in. That's one. That's two. Three, maybe. Oh, nice. All right. Best possible outcome. Go speed retreat. Right, we'll get our, our fires doing a massive loitering circle, but we want to basically stop him from interfering at all with our ability to bomb on this side. We might... The torpedo bombers are landing. That's okay. We're only taking small ineffectual fire. We'll go after the Leander. Oh my god. And we'll get the torpedo bomber to, I guess, drop him again. Oh, these ones are going for it. Yeah, you gotta you got manipulate the turn though. He needs to do it so it's going like this. Oh wait, he's dead. Never mind. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> I just realized he's dead. Okay, the Togi Revolution, however, is like alive. Uh, help would be nice. Oh my god. Okay, torpedo bombers on the air. I'm gonna. Oh, nice. Okay, so now we're gonna try a YOLO torp drop. If we get this guy. <laughs> Uh, are there any other planes left over? There are no other planes left over, so we'll pull uh, an escort on the Queen Elizabeth, just in case there are any bombs left over, and then we'll try and drop the T-22. Because if we kill him, I go stealth. Oh! I go hidden. I don't even mind that the torpedo bomber dropped. We need to kill that plane, though. What's our air detection? Uh... Oh, we got, we got, we got, we got safely. So I'm alive. I'm gonna keep going down away from this Haruna. Uh, we'll use our bombs on the Haruna as well because he's the closest threat to us. Uh, but we need to get rid of this cap up uh, plane. So I'm gonna fly directly in the center of its rotation, click on it, and kill it off if it's not already kind of fallen into the water and died. Which looks like it does because it times out after a period of a few minutes. Hmm. Yeah, let me turn the web camera off because oh, the not so great. There you go. Right, so that plane's gone. We can now go back. How are we doing? We're winning barely. That's great. The Haruna we can probably kill. The Zuiho has a single fire left over. It can still theoretically cause a panic. We'll go after the Haruna though. I'm actually going to be patient, a little bit patient, and have the fighter go over, because there's no rush to kill the Haruna. Well, actually, there is a bit of a rush, because he's going to spot me any moment. Our detection's at 11.5. Yeah, so here's where Concealment Expert could come in really handy. What I would like to do is, I don't think I could kill him outright, so I want the Torpedo Bombers to go first. Like we did last time. And see if we can't get a dot to stick on him. I'm going to have the fighter go over and do a protection. So he cannot cause a panic effect, because he can't exit straight out of that. There's no all attacks. We'll do it slightly from behind, because it's going a straight line. Oh, see how he's turning into them? Should get like two or three. Right, got his fire. Now we'll go after that catapult. Oh, that's perfect. He's even turning away from it. He might actually die from this now, because he's going to eat like four. That's great. So he made all the mistakes there. Oh, the clear skies. Nice. So we'll pull the fighter away. Uh, because of the large drop reticle, it's very difficult for me to hit the Omaha, so I will go after the War Spike, just to try and guarantee as many hits as possible. He's taking quite a few hits, we might, might kill him here, or at least inconvenience him slightly. Yeah, two bomb hits. If we had more bomb hits, we might have died, but he'll die to the Graf Space Torps, great, and the Omaha dies, fantastic. Well then, uh, looks like we've got ourselves a win. What's left? Uh, a Furutaka and a Zuyo. So we'll go spot where they are. We're in the lead by points. The game clock's got 5 minutes and 20. We still have plane reserves. We've been very careful with who we've attacked and how we've attacked, so we still have full of bombing waves left over, and we can go after the Furutaka or the enemy Zuyo. So we know where the Furutaka is, because our Omaha sees him. That's great. Um, 
I don't feel like we need to keep him spotted because he can't smoke. Uh, we could theoretically fly between the two ships to spot incoming torpedoes from the fur attacker, but otherwise uh, that's fine. The Omaha probably can't deal with him, but the fact is uh, I'll keep the planes nearby in case the Omaha dies, but the battleships will be able to see him. We can get close to the battle as well now as well. I'm guessing the Zuho has been fully bled dry. Because normally what you do is we, we would follow the return path. We would follow the return path of planes. And uh, that way we could tell where the carrier was. But in this particular instance, uh, obviously we can't do that because he has no planes to follow. Alright, I guess we use the fire to go scout. Zui can be pretty stealthy if it wants to be, so we'll, we'll try and kind of anticipate just by scouting in the middle, see if we can't find anything here, and then go back that way. See if we can't find them. Fur attack is going to die, so there's no real point trying to bomb him. Great, so now, now it's all on finding the carrier. There he is. So we'll just keep him lit at maximum range. Looks like he, no, he's not totally given up yet. We can probably get one or two torpedo hits on him, depending on how he maneuvers and how we drop and how we approach him. We could probably get one or two, uh, which is enough to uh, maybe cause a flooding. And if it does cause a flooding, uh, we can follow it with the dive bomber, but we won't attack both uh, separately. The thing is no one else is gonna get a, a shot on him. So he's, he's ours to kill, but put it that way. So we're going to click on him, and then we're going to go from behind, like this. Now I, could, I could turn it around and go from this direction, but I'm going to go past him, not from the nose and from behind, because see how I know he's in a turn. So if I come at him from behind, he can't dodge that. The only thing I have to be concerned about is I'm inside his AA bubble for quite a period of time. But that should be okay. Now he might actually even just die from this, because that's the best possible angle drop because he's in a hard turn he can't turn any harder he can't turn out to the left because he has to come out of his first turn so we, we know we're going to hit him with a bunch of torps and hey presto we get our kill three torps not bad we got ourselves a clear sky we did 130,000 damage and an auto attacking bog that's pretty good we're top spot we got 2240 base experience it was a good game for us. Anyway, that concludes uh, this episode on the Bog. I hope it was informative for you. If you got any questions, by all means, go ahead and post them down below. Previous video we did was on the Langley. The next upcoming video will be on the Independence. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.